Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I'm Papa Pepper in my natural environment, the garden, and uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about snakes. And I'm a big advocate for education. We live in such an information age, and yet people seem to be more ignorant than ever. Um, it's not that hard to avoid venomous snakes in the United States. In fact, I say there's only four kinds of snakes you need to worry about, which would be the coral snakes the copperheads, the cottonmouths, and the rattlesnakes. And if it's not one of those, then you don't need to worry about it. And that's because the rest of the snakes aren't really going to be able to put you in a life-threatening situation the vast, vast, vast majority of the time. I'm not saying you couldn't choke on one. I'm not saying a large, you know, invasive species couldn't uh, constrict you or something. But as far as native species, it's not that hard to learn those four kinds of snakes and then to realize that everyone else is pretty chill. These two happen to be orange striped ribbon snakes. Ribbon snakes and garter snakes look a lot alike. Um, they give live birth and so snake eggs are not going to be from garter snakes. These guys are really cool. Garter snakes, ribbon snakes, they're going to live in a lot of aquatic environments, a lot of fields. They'll eat a lot of uh, smaller reptiles, amphibians, insects. Not uncommon to find a lot of these guys you know down by the water and if you look at them they're all pretty much going to be black with some yellow stripes of some sort and for a lot of people telling a ribbon snake apart from a garter snake is going to be rather difficult. A lot of people call them garden snakes but garter snakes or ribbon snakes pretty cool. They're basically when they are live born they're going to be around a foot so they come out pretty long. Um, I found some maybe seven eight inches over the time but the largest kinds can get up to about five feet that's going to be pretty rare, but it's not uncommon to find them two or three feet long. These guys are super cool. I'm going to put them back over by their uh, by the pond, let them live over there. One of these was actually trying to eat a pickerel frog in one of our recent videos. I heard the frog in distress went over there. It was one of these guys. So we're going to let them chill, be part of our organic pest control posse around here, and uh, maybe breed later, give some live birth. These guys are some of my favorite snakes in the area. They're rough green snakes. I actually have four in my hand now. And uh, they look basically like little vines. If you see a green snake, okay, just like if you see a long black snake with yellow lines, it's not gonna be venomous, it's not gonna be life-threatening. If you see a green snake that's native in the United States, it's not gonna be a problem for you. There aren't coral snakes or copperheads or water moccasins or rattlesnakes that look like this. So if you see one of these, it's okay. They can do their thing. You can let them uh, just be. Let them enjoy themselves. There's nothing wrong with these snakes. These guys eat a lot of uh, insects. And uh, there's also a smooth green snake we had back in my native Wisconsin. These guys both lay eggs and they eat a lot of insects. So as pesticides become more uh, common, these snakes can take a hit because their food source is taking a hit. I know that the uh, smooth green snake, a lot of people call it grass snakes back up north, those really took a hit. Their population diminished pretty well, so it's nice to see so many of these around here. Kind of like amphibians uh, being the first to go when an environment starts to go south and uh, they absorb so much from their skin. That to see these guys uh, in such numbers around here lets me know we've got a pretty good environment going on right now. And these guys do lay eggs. We've actually found eggs in our garden before, temporarily detained them, and when they started hatching, uh, we let them hatch in the palm of our hands. There's a really cool video on that. Uh, we knew it wasn't going to be a venomous snake because all the venomous snakes in our area, copperheads, cottonmouths, and rattlesnakes, all give live birth. So therefore, any egg is not going to be dangerous for us that we find around here. Um, all those North American pit vipers, they give live birth. So we watched some of these hatch out. It was really cool. They'll lay up to about a dozen eggs when they hatch out. They're around like eh, six inches or so. And they can get up to three feet or better with I think the record coming in just below four feet. So really cool snakes. They look like vines, really cool. But again, these are never gonna be a problem. They're never gonna be a life-threatening situation for you. So you don't need to fear snakes like this. These tiny, these tiny little guys here, you see that ring on their neck? These are all ring neck snakes. Now there is a, a red-bellied snake that also has a belly that looks similar. Um, they're both egg layers, but these ones got their necks with the little rings on them. I never seen these back in my native Wisconsin, although they were there. But they're common around here. They'll eat worms and slugs. And um, 
various insects. They hatch from eggs. These are all very small ones. And uh, they've got these beautiful orange bellies. I don't know if I can turn one around. Yeah, beautiful orange belly, often with little black dots on it. And down to the tip, it gets really red, which they'll coil up sometimes and hold like a shield. Um, any of these snakes that I'm showing you can and will bite, but as long as you clean it, you know, and you don't let it get infected, there's really no issues with these things. If you see these little gray or olive snakes up to about 15 inches with these little rings on their neck, there's nothing wrong with them. They're fine. I like them because they'll eat slugs out here in my garden. So these three are going to go here. And um, they are egg layers. They lay up to about 10 eggs. They're really cool. Nice little harmless guys. They do kind of have a white throat underneath them. And um, ones that we don't need to fear, they can be here. I'm just going to let them go back in my strawberry patch. They can head out there and do their thing. And like most snakes, those guys can all open their mouths, they can strike at you, they can open their mouth and kind of act scary, and they can bite. They're not being aggressive, you're big and scary to them. I got a video that would really help put some things in perspective, if you guys want to check it out, I'd highly recommend it. And while we're on two-toned snakes, we have this beautiful worm snake. Those guys are super cool. These are fossorial snakes, so most of their life they spend underground. There's kind of a more of a pastel color. And then there's kind of more of this vibrant one for the bottom. They remind me of sluggos, which are little fishing baits that we'd find as children. These, if you're digging in the soil, or if you're flipping over rocks or logs or something like that, you're most likely going to see them. And mostly they eat worms. They're really cool. You'd be hard pressed to find, you know, a smoother, beautiful snake out in this area. I really enjoy them. They don't pose a threat to me. So again, I'm just going to let that go in my garden too. Just like with the uh, green snakes, where there's a smooth green snake and a rough green snake, uh, the smooth green snakes are shorter and they stay most of their life on the ground. Those longer, more slender, rough green snakes are more likely to be arboreal and be climbing up in trees. And with these earth snakes now, these are very small snakes. They only get like 10 or less inches. And there's a smooth earth snake and a rough earth snake. What you do is you look at the scales, which is often very hard because they're so tiny, and if they're just a regular smooth scale, that's a smooth earth snake. If they've got a line running down them, that's a rough earth snake because the scale is keeled. And a lot of times you'll find keeled snakes or keeled scaled snakes with things like the uh, water snakes because it helps them get more of a grip, if you will, on the water, a little more surface area. But this little guy, this is a smooth earth snake. Like I said, they're basically going to be on 10 inches or less. They're another fossorial snake that'll eat, you know, a lot of things that are tiny at the soil level. The record one of these was only like 14 inches or just over a foot. And these guys also give live birth, so they'll be almost like a little worm. We've got night crawlers on this property bigger than this for sure. And then when I mention snakes, like a lot of people think that any snake down by the water is a water moccasin. That's just simply not the case. In fact, most of the snakes that I've seen in my entire life down by the water were some form of Nerodia. And the Rhodia is a genus of non-venomous water snakes. I think there's nine different species in there. Mostly we encounter the plain-bellied and the uh, Nerodia cypodon, the northern water snake or midland water snake. There's also a diamondback water snake. There's a uh, broad-banded water snake, a uh, green water snake. There's just, there's just some different cool colors. They give, uh, and patterns, they give live birth so they're not going to have eggs and, and these guys will get often up to three or four feet i think the record was just over five and a half feet but they're cool and they often will change the shape of their head and the shape of their body um i got a video from the first day i got bit by a venomous snake i was showing kind of how these guys can change their bodies a whole bunch i cover some of that in that video so check that out if you want, but the vast majority of snakes you're going to see by the water probably are not water moccasins. They're not cottonmouths. They're just non-venomous snakes that happen to live down there by the water. And if you can learn to identify what a water moccasin looks like, um, you can avoid, avoid a lot of fear. It's not that hard sometimes, even from a distance. Um, I do have a real good video, I thought, on just identifying a water moccasin. And um, there's also one you can probably find in the link of that video about how to identify them from a distance because most people aren't going to, you know, pick up the tail, look at the vent, see how the scales are on the belly after the vent or something like that. 
Um, but it helps to know. If you guys can be aware of your environment and know what you're dealing with, it makes it so much easier to not be irrationally afraid. There's things we should be concerned about, but I don't want an irrational fear of things that are unrealistic, okay? So now let's transition just to one of the venomous ones we have in this area, and this may be the largest copperhead I've ever found. Wolf. On the other end of the spectrum is things like this, which is venomous, is a North American pit viper, is a copperhead. It is absolutely beautiful. Really kind of a red color. It wants to move a lot. So I'm trying not to let it go too much while still keeping control of it, while still keeping me safe. It's not wanting to cooperate right now, and I don't recommend anyone pick these up or handle them. Uh, most people, when they get hurt, it's because they were trying to capture or trying to kill them. So if you don't try to capture or kill snakes, you're a lot less likely to get hurt. But this one is venomous. This one is a copperhead. Not too uh, defensive of a snake. You know, it's not taking swings at me. But if it was taking swings at me, it wouldn't be because it was aggressive. It would be because it was defensive. Whoa, buddy. There we go. Come on, buddy. Yeah. If you look here, now because of the leaves it happens to be on, it's way easier to see. Its tail right now is uh, actually vibrating and it's smelling a lot. So at this point I kind of aggravated it and it's become more defensive. But if you think about this, during the heat of summer a lot of these North American pit vipers are nocturnal. So they're going to be very hard to see because they're out at night. I always tell my children make sure to have flashlights and make sure to have footwear on. Uh, boots are best in situations like this. A lot of them aren't going to have that reddish color and they're going to be a lot more looking like these leaves and even during the day they're hard to see. Also this far in the south you can find these almost every month out of the year because it doesn't really get cold enough for long enough to send them into a full hibernation and you'll have days sometimes even in the middle of winter where it's 80 degrees or something for a couple days in a row and sometimes they'll come out and check things out. This guy did take a couple swings at me when I set it down tried to get a better handle on it and now it's just kind of watching me and monitoring me. But I will say you're not going to encounter many snakes that look like this kind of some of the uh, Corn snakes or stuff are going to have a pattern, but it's not going to be like this. So, if you can learn what copperheads look like, you'll be a lot safer. Hopefully that helps. Educate yourself. He's coming back towards me. I got to go. Pop out. Also, I do have a video on how to keep your children safe around snakes. If you guys want to check that out, I'd recommend it.